fellow Star Wars nerds, and welcome to Unlimited Content, the podcast where two brothers talk about all of Star Wars film and TV in chronological order on the internet as an excuse to hang out more. We are your hosts, Sam and Jack, and this week we're talking about The Clone Wars Season 3, Episodes 10 and 11, Heroes on Both Sides, and Pursuit of Peace. Jack! Hello! Sam! How are you? I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing... I'm doing all right. My My... I'm, I'm feeling good right now, but my sleep schedule has been weird over the past few days because oh, of no. <laughs> work stuff. Uh, so I just I had to. It was one of those those days where I had to like cover for somebody else because somebody was taking a day off, and so I ended up working a split shift, which again is it's two a.m. to six a.m. and then two p.m. to six p.m. That is on the, the same worst. Day. That was yeah. So <laughs> I did that, um, and so I, I I woke up at four p.m. today. <laughs> because that's that's where my oh. schedule is oh, no. but that, that's kind of good because uh tomorrow aka tonight i'm going to be start working at 2 a.m <laughs> because oh, uh no. one of my co-workers got covid and so we had to switch some things around last minute and so i am <laughs> they got the rona oh no yep yeah i t- I, I did a, a rapid test and tested negative so and i feel fine so great I'm pretty sure i'm, I'm all right but, that makes but, one so that's us. good I've got, like, but yeah thing. i'll Not have to COVID, but i I'm oh, no. crusty today, so if I sound weird, it's because I am weird. Yeah, well, that's part of the course. It's part of the course. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, uh, so I yeah, I'm luckily I only have to work four hours. I'll I'll, I'll be working an early shift, but I'll be working a half shift. So that'll be I'll just work two to six, and then I go home and I'm done for the day. So love it. That's not too bad. Uh-huh. Um, how are you, Sam? Uh, other than like, I'm getting over like a head cold, but I'm doing pretty good, mm-hmm. all things considered. It's super nice yeah. out up here. Um, spent all day basically yesterday on my back porch, which was awesome. We like nice. We moved our couch from like we have like an outdoor like bench on our front porch. It's kind of like a couch. We moved mm-hmm. to our back porch, and we got some like citronella lanterns and things and so we've been living on the back porch so i've been getting a lot of a lot of sunshine a lot of fresh air um and i was working in That's cool. my in-laws yard all day today they got a bunch of mulch let's help them spread mulch because mm-hmm. they're old and they can't do it and so <laughs> gotcha. they, they have us do it um mm-hmm. but it's good what is this a citronella what? so citronella is like a like uh kind of like an like a citrusy oil that repels mosquitoes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. Yep. Cool. So, uh, it's, we have like these like little like tabletop tiki torches and they are citronella scented. So, ah, nice. Cool. No bugs. That's good. But yeah, it's good. I would like to be spending more time outside, but right now in Austin, the, the uh, allergies are not doing good. It's just, we're high in, in all the pollen counts and all the things. Oh, and we are just, we are here too. We're just suffering through it. <laughs> we're oh, just okay. like, yeah, it's, like <laughs> gotcha. I mean, it's the Midwest. We've been cooped up inside for so long. Like, let us be outside, please. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. Yep. So it feels nice. We're just all crusty and sneezy. Yeah, but it feels so good. Crusty and sneezy. <laughs> those are those are both Simpsons characters, probably. Yeah. <laughs> it's a uh, Sheen Scratchy spinoff. Crusty and Sneezy. Yeah, Crusty and Sneezy. I guess Crusty is the clown. And Ishin Scratchy. Yeah, Crusty is the clown. Sneezy is uh, Ishin Scratchy is a spinoff. One of the Crusty seven dwarfs. Clown. Oh yeah. I did watch Snow White yesterday, Marion. Did you? I did. Nice. How was it? It was nice. Snow White. It was good. Yeah. It was a classic. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I I I feel like I started watching Snow White once forever ago, and I just like. After twenty minutes, I was like, "I can't. This is insufferable. This is the. It's like the the, the voices are very like. It's very of its time. Oh yeah, you know. Oh yeah. It- <laughs> yeah, but Marion loved it, and there were all sorts of like little woodland Excellent. creatures hopping on the screen, and she was happy, yes. happy in this music, and she was half watching, half playing with toys in the living room, and Sarah was taking a nap, Amazing. and so I was just scrolling on my phone with it on the background, and she was watching. It's just kind of like a, how can we just have, like, a quiet afternoon where, like, no one has to watch anyone, and it's TV and toys mm-hmm. in the living room while Dad lays on the couch. Excellent. That's what we did. It was great. It was awesome. That was good. Yeah. 
you know, Jack, um, hmm. tomorrow is tax day. And oh, yeah, true. We have to somehow pay our taxes. How in the world are we going to afford all of these taxes that we've accrued in this very, very profitable podcast? <laughs> yeah, all of our, all the taxes we have to, the back taxes we have to pay government. Um, well, lucky for us, we do have a sponsor this week <laughs> to keep us afloat through this this rough tax season of ours. Um, this week's episode of Unlimited Content is brought to you by the Great American Eclipse. The Great American Eclipse. It was great. It was real nice. It was great. Yeah, you it got totality. American. Tell me about that. That was fun. Yeah, so uh, here in Austin, we got about 90 seconds of totality, um, at like a minute and a half-ish, something like that, and uh, it was unfortunately cloudy that day, um, but we oh, no. did get like, it, it was, it was yeah, it was mostly cloudy, but during totality, where I was at, at, at this, the we were like in the parking lot of KVU, the station that I work at, and we, they had like a food truck, and um people were outside with their their clips classes and it was it was a fun little event uh pre-work um but uh yeah it, it was cloudy most of the time but we got a solid like 15 seconds where the clouds parted and we could see the the eclipse in totality nice. so that, that was really nice i did get to see it that's good that's cool nice we only got 89 percent coverage so we didn't get mm -hmm. totality but it did get like eerily dark for a while um, not like yeah. dark, dark, but like everything, like all the colors just kind of look desaturated, and it looked like it yes, looked like I, I, it looked yeah. like the world. I remember last year when we had the yeah, it was like yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I remember last year when we had the the other eclipse. Uh, that was not a, it was not a full eclipse, but it was you know, I, I remember that that same feeling of like yeah, it, everything just is weird. It feels like I'm wearing sunglasses, kind of yeah, like yeah, it's super weird and eerie. Um, here in 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 totality, it was. Like, you know, for a solid minute and a half here, it, it basically felt like it was nighttime. Like oh, yeah. the, it was so weird. It, it was, it was, it was weird and eerie. And like, there was a, a literal chill in the air because like the, the temperature dropped like 10 degrees because of the, you know, the sun was blocked. Yeah. And yeah, it, it was, like it was, five it was degrees up fascinating here and weird. With just like that 90% mm -hmm. coverage. Like it was like four yeah, or five yeah. degrees cooler. It was really cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then and also because we were out in the parking lot, all of the like parking lot lights all turned on oh, no because way. it was like it thought thought it was nighttime. It was like it was it was interesting. It, it just felt like yeah, for ninety seconds we had just teleported to nighttime and then we came back. It was very interesting. It was cool. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, thank I, you for to the uh, the wonders of nature and the eclipse for sponsoring this episode. Yes, thank you very much for sponsoring us. I remember back in twenty seventeen, there was an eclipse that. We got totality in Kansas City back in 2017, mm. and it yeah. was yeah. I remember it was super weird. Uh, just like it got yeah, it got weirdly dark, and it, like it was just it was very quick though. It like didn't take like it wasn't it was a quick one. It wasn't as long as mm -hmm. this one for for you guys. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's such a weird, cool thing. I just I loved how like communal it felt. Like everyone was just like mm -hmm. like we're all gather together to just enjoy something in wonder for a while and like just get excited yes. about something that's just like purely good and wholesome and nice and mm -hmm. beautiful and we don't get enough of that and it was just kind of like a nice thing it made mm -hmm. me happy like it just made yeah. me feel good to be a person to like experience yeah. this as a human it, race yeah. it always feels cool when there's like a something some sort of big event or whatever that it feels like everybody's celebrating um and this is one of those things that yeah it just there's no like yeah it's it's just pure like delight and wonder and beauty and it's something that everybody can enjoy and be fascinated by and yeah it was cool right. i agree yeah yeah man <clears throat> well jack other than yes. burning your eyes out looking at eclipse without sunglasses on what have, ah! you, what have you been yeah. up to this last two weeks it's been two weeks since we recorded but yeah it's been a couple of weeks um let's see well um i finally started listening to dark disciple star wars dark disciple as an audiobook tell me about so it what do you think uh it's it's very very good it? i am i'm 
Yeah, so I'm, I'm about halfway through the book, uh, and then my my uh, loan expired, so I will I'll have to get back to it at some point. Once, no. once the yeah, because it was it was on somebody else had it on hold. So, but I, I got I got halfway through it, and it's so far very very good. Um, you were right. Uh, the who's the the guy that does the narration? Um, uh, Mark Thompson. I want to say Thompson. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. whoever it is, uh, you were right. He does an amazing job. He's so good. Oh, yeah. He's like it, 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 it. I kept having to like, like, wonder is this actually the same guy doing all these voices? Because he he's so good at doing. He does you know the weird you know alien monster voices. He does like good impressions of various characters from the movies and and from Clone Wars. Like his his assage is really really good. Like yeah. it's. Yeah, he's so good, and I think, I think it's he just it's, it's so entertaining. He only had because he does a couple. He's on a couple other Star Wars audiobooks, mm. and the only voice of his that I don't like is General Grievous. I think. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. I think maybe no. Just kidding. I'm thinking of this episode three novelization, and that was it was just a bad General Grievous for that. Ah, but that was okay. I don't think it was Mark yeah. Thompson. Anyway, never mind. Take it back, yeah. Mark Thompson. You're great. <laughs> Yeah, he he's incredible. That it's like I'm I'm enjoying it. But honestly, I mean for the for the story and the characters and everything, obviously. But like his performance elevates it so much. It feels so like engaging, and he's he's just so expressive, and he gets everything, just the the excitement, and the energy across, and the emotion, and uh, it's so good. And, it, and it's a fascinating story, and it's really cool to like. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to eventually getting back into it. <laughs> once, yeah. once the uh, my my I'm able to borrow it again from the library. Was it just one of those? Um, if I don't just hold? decide what? to, yeah, somebody else had it on hold, and so now I, now I'm on the hold list again. Are you like next in line, so, or is there like multiple people heading in line? I I don't know. I'm not sure. Okay, but yeah, I might just end up buying the audiobook <laughs> for myself or something. I mean, it's worth it. But it's good. Yeah, it's very good. Um, so yeah, definitely very much enjoying that and I'm, I'm looking forward to uh talking about it in more detail and in full once i've finished it nice. um but yeah really really good it, it feels very like uh sort of more of an adult star wars story than we typically get oh yeah uh you know it feels very like especially with the level of like romance that happens in this it, it's very much a a, a romance novel in a yeah. lot of ways because it's it, you know it's about uh, Ventress and Quinlan Voss and their relationship and um, yeah it's just a lot more kind of adult and serious and intimate and thoughtful about and descriptive about romance in, in a way that most Star Wars media is not I feel like yeah um, and it's and it's just all it's all really good performances are great the story is fascinating and exciting and it moves at a clip and like you know, I, I was sitting down and listening to it for hours at a time while, like, playing video games and just having it on the background. And, like, yeah, I think the, the first time I sat down to listen to it, I sat down and, like, listened to the first three hours in one sitting or something. And Oh, yeah. Yeah. As someone who doesn't do a lot of reading these days or a lot of, like, you know, listening to podcasts or uh, audiobooks or anything, like, I, it had me hooked really fast. So, definitely looking forward to getting to the rest of it and i highly recommend it based on what i've read and heard so far nice you want to share it with our audience just a brief synopsis of what it's about i don't remember if we've talked about it before yeah sure sure um we may have talked about it but um yeah so this is a a a story that takes place during kind of the tail end of the clone wars it was originally going to be i think an eight episode clone wars arc before uh it, Clone Wars got temporarily canceled, um, and so then they turned this arc into a book, and it is uh, mainly from the perspective of Jedi Master Quinlan Vos, who is tasked by the Jedi Council with uh, assassinating Count Dooku, and in order to do that, they send him to basically uh, ingratiate himself to Asajj Ventress and to kind of recruit her, and uh, so they together can defeat Dooku, um, and over time they they fall in love and it's a good good old fun adventure but it's also got lots of drama and it it's very good it's a super fun story and i'm, I'm loving it yeah it's really really good 
I'm glad you like it. And the reason why this has been on both Sam and I's radar is because it, it's the uh, the last canon story that involves Asajj Ventress until the Bad Batch, where she she appeared in this most recent season. And so there's there's a some sort of link there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway. So. Yeah. So very much enjoying that. Uh, let's see what else. Um, the. Uh, our recent in the past several years i feel like there's been a renaissance of or not even a renaissance but like a first time like trend of good video game adaptations um so we've had like you know detective pikachu and the sonic movies and uh the mario animated movie was pretty good uh last year we had the last of us hbo series which was very highly acclaimed um and then this year uh, just this past week we got the fallout tv show on amazon prime premiered um i love the fallout series i've played hundreds of hours across fallout 3 and new vegas and 4 um i love that universe and it's it was it's very exciting to me when they announced this series and revealed it um it's from the creators of uh it's from jonathan nolan and lisa joy who are i think they're a couple i think they're married um and they did westworld oh cool. um and yeah, and Jonathan Nolan also has done a bunch of other stuff. He did um, Person of Interest, which is a, a great sci-fi TV show. Yeah. Is it, um, isn't he Christopher Nolan's brother? Yes, I believe so. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, uh, Fallout is a, it's a new series on Amazon Prime based on the video games. Uh, takes place in the, in the Fallout universe, which is... It's kind of complicated to describe, but it's kind of a dark, com- darkly comedic universe that's post nuclear war, uh, and it takes place in a version of America that's the very kind of like nineteen fifties inspired, but it's post apocalyptic. And anyway, it's very interesting. It's got a really neat like tone and a lot of great characters, and uh, yeah. So I, I've I've not watched the whole thing yet they did they do this thing where like i like the fact that disney plus releases their shows like an episode at a time over the course of several weeks um whereas amazon prime is still sticking with this sort of the same model that netflix has been doing which is you know just release a whole season at once which i feel like in the early days of streaming that was kind of exciting and cool but maybe maybe it's just that i'm older now and i have like more media that i want to consume and less time to do so but i like <laughs> yeah i'm like i wish they would just do a weekly release because that, that's a it, it makes it more of a communal experience to get to you know everybody you know you get more of a like a community discussion experience because you're talking about each episode week over week and people can talk about it whereas now it's like i have to watch an entire season's worth of tv before i can go online and start like looking at other people like i have to avoid spoilers and stuff and yeah you know it's frustrating, so... Um, but I have watched the first episode, uh, which was, like... It's, like, a, a super long opening episode. It's, like, 80 minutes long or something. Um, but it's very, very good. They they really nailed the look and feel and tone of the games, which I love. Um, and it's a, it's a really nice-looking show with some great acting and uh, writing. And, yeah, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to getting into the rest of this series. But it's, like... Because it's a, <laughs> I, I usually when I'm watching TV or something, it's it's while I'm like eating a meal, yeah. and this is not a show I want to watch while eating a meal because there's a lot of gore in it. Oh, so it's like I have to yeah. you know set aside specific time to like to to watch the show. Um, I I might be watching some of it with some friends sometime this week oh, to cool. like like as, as like a watch party. So that that might be nice. But um, yeah, uh, I know that yeah I, I talked with Dad briefly about this show and, and told him that I was like, I think you might like this. I don't think mom will like it. Cause no, it's very gory. Yeah. It <laughs> but, like it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I was like, yeah, I think you like it. And so he was like, he and Max and also mom actually watched the first episode. Mm-hmm. And, and, and the dad texted me. and was like, yeah, this is a show that me and Max are going to watch together. I was like, <laughs> yeah, That's what I thought. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it sounds like he, he's really enjoying it, which is cool. Sweet. Um, Yeah. So there's that. And then the the last thing that I've been it's been on my plate recently is a game that I started playing this week. Um 
came out earlier this year and it just got its physical release this past week and I, I bought the physical edition um it's a game called pacific drive i believe i've talked about it maybe a little bit before like maybe when it was first announced or in my like most anticipated things of 2024 i think you did, bit, I, the I, I recognize year, the name, like but i have no idea what it is mm -hmm. yeah so pacific drive is a it's like a, it's a first person like crafting and survival game where you drive like an old beat up station wagon around in the Pacific Northwest. And there's like paranormal activity and weird sci-fi things happening. And yeah, um, it's, it's really, it's a really cool idea. It's a cool premise where like the idea is that in the 1950s and sixties, the government did a bunch of experiments in the Pacific Northwest. And that led to like a, a huge portion of the Pacific Northwest kind of being corrupted by these, I don't know, just kind of like becoming destabilized in a, in a sort of, you know, sci-fi, paranormal weirdness way. And so they had to kind of wall off an entire zone of the country in that, in that corner of the country. And they call it the Olympic exclusion zone. Um, and the premise is that it, it's now like 40 years later, it takes place in the 90s and you are like driving near the wall and you get sucked in and you have to like survive on the inside oh, and man. uh anyway it's it's very it's got a super cool aesthetic and story and lots of cool world building it's really fascinating and it, it's it's fun because it's just like it, it's all about like taking care of and upgrading your car it's it's a really cool fun like fascinating experience um yeah i'm, I'm enjoying it a lot and it, it's it's very like there's a lot of different systems to, to kind of keep track of and learn about. So there's a steep learning curve there, but, uh, and it's, it's a pretty hard game, but it, it's, I'm enjoying it a lot. I'm, I'm looking forward to getting, getting through more of it. It's fascinating. And it's, it's the, the kind of like sci-fi and mystery and exploration aspects of it are, are all very much up my alley in terms of like, the, you know, that's the, those are definitely the kinds of games that I like. So, um, yeah, Pacific drive, very good so far um i'm only i don't know like five hours in i don't know how long it'll it'll take for me to get through the whole thing but um i will report back probably once i'm through the whole thing but so far i'm really enjoying it so um yeah that's that's those are the, the big things i've been up to lately sam what about you what have you been up to these past couple weeks what have you been um, doing well at your recommendation i started listening to the audio drama of dooku jedi lost which is actually really cool. Um, mm -hmm. Like I, I'm kind of liking it a lot. Because um, mm -hmm. uh, because it it came out about five years ago, and it kind of follows um, Asajj Ventress learning about Dooku's backstory to track mm -hmm. down yep. a member of Dooku's family. Um, and so there's just most of it is just flashbacks to Dooku and Saipo Dyas in the Jedi temple and Dooku's kind of like slow progression towards the dark side. Um, mm -hmm. like, cause he was kind of like the, the top of his class in the Jedi Academy. And, um, and he's like constantly butting heads with Yoda, who's his, his master. And, um, mm -hmm. it's, it's really cool and fun. Um, not nearly as good as dark disciple, but it's like still is good. And I, I'm, I'm enjoying it a lot. And I, I love just all of this kind of like new, like a lot, a lot of the prequel era stuff really kind of leans into this, like the, the demythologizing of the Jedi and like, they're not as perfect as we once thought they were and kind of like getting to see yeah, that yeah. kind of side. Um, it's, it, Cause it's always painted from this perspective of somebody who, like really looked up to this institution really like like they had a heart this person had a heart of gold love what the institution was all about and they get into the institution and find out that that's not what it is um yeah and those kind of stories for a lot of reasons really resonate with me um mm -hmm. and i i don't know i really i'm really liking it so it's, it's really cool yeah yeah that's cool i, I agree with the like so I started listening to to uh, Dooku Jedi Lost 
uh, before I started listening to Dark Disciple. And I was like, this this is kind of good. This is interesting. Um, and but I was like, I didn't get super hooked on it immediately. And then I started listening to Dark Disciple, and that did hook me immediately. Yeah. So like, I I I think I I still have Dooku Jedi Lost uh, borrowed from my library. So I'll probably go back and listen to that while I'm waiting for Dark Disciple to to cool. come back to my in my possession. Yeah, but, I'm about yeah. I'm about um, halfway through it right now, and I got about I think a week and a half left on my rental. Yeah. So. <clears throat> yeah, it's it's also cool because like it's it's a specifically an audio drama, so it's like a full cast of of actors performing like, the different roles and um yeah, so like they they got the original voice actor for Ventress to come back and, and voice her, which is cool. Just like her. Um, that's cool. Yeah, they definitely did not get <laughs> the original voice actor for uh, Dooku. No. I don't think Dooku sounds very good. It sounds awful. But it sounds awful. Yeah, uh, he sounds. Like um, Harry Potter, that's what he sounds like. <laughs> what? Okay. Just, I mean, like, like he just he sound like the the young Dooku sounds like Daniel Radcliffe. Oh, young Dooku. Young okay, Dooku I was, I was like, talking about young Dooku sounds like Daniel Radcliffe. Okay. Mm-hmm. I, I I know I can hear that. I thought you were talking about old Dooku. Oh, I was old like, Dooku what? just sounds gen- generic, like imposing British person. Like it doesn't. Yeah, it's not, doesn't it? Yeah, it's, that, that, that was what bothered not, me. Like I, I, I don't have a problem with the young Dooku. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like obviously they couldn't get just really for obvious reasons, but you know they didn't even get like the guy who did Clone Wars, whoever that was. Yeah, that um, would have been perfect to get the Clone Wars guy. Yeah, but well, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's cool. Um, what else, Sam? What else have you been up to? Um, so I'm still watching X Men '97, and mm-hmm. I know last week or two weeks ago when we last talked, um, I was kind of a little like not as excited about. X Men ninety seven, mm-hmm. X Men ninety seven. I'm sorry I ever doubted how good of a show you were, because <laughs> um, I think there were just some like I don't want to say filler episodes, but it was kind of filler ish. Like, because there's a lot of backstory. Mm-hmm. That I'm sure it's going to come back like towards the tail end of the season, but mm-hmm. um, it's just a lot it didn't of feel as exciting or as pivotal. And now, like, yeah. major major event happened in episode five is the one that just came out. Um, it's one that takes place on Genosha. Which is the uh, an island of nation mutant island, right? Excuse, exclusively uh, for mutants, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Real big, big, exciting, dramatic stuff. And you started watching X Men '97 a little bit, right? Have you watched a couple episodes? Yes, yeah. So I yeah I watched the first two episodes per your recommendation, and I I really enjoyed them. I need to get back into I need to catch up so we can great talk because I very much want to talk about it because especially episode five is like it's so good stuff goes down stuff, so much stuff goes down and i want to talk to you about it <laughs> yeah. but i can't because mm-hmm. i love you and respect you and i won't spoil it for you <laughs> thank you <laughs> yeah um yeah I, I think it's it's yeah from the the first two episodes i am really liking it i like how like it you know it, it matches the style of the original 90s series um, but it's obviously, you know, with, with a much, uh, you know, modern technology and a bigger budget and it's, it's, I think the writing and the characterization feels a little more kind of adult and mature. Oh yeah. Um, cause I, I think, I, just, think yeah. I think, I think cause they, they like X-Men 97, it was made for the kids who grew up watching the original X-Men cartoon. Yeah. Which is yeah. all like millennials who are like adults now. And so it makes sense that yes. it has kind yeah. of an adulterish tone. Which mm-hmm. I love. I yeah, love that which they, is cool. They're yeah, not yeah. just like we're still making a kids show. We're like, no, we're making a show for the same kids we made it for back then. They're just in their thirties now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Cause like in the first couple episodes, it's like, yeah, Jean Grey is pregnant with Scott Summers' kid, and like, there's you know, kind of interpersonal drama, and uh, you know, they're dealing with the aftermath of the death of Professor X, and. And there's yeah, it, it's it's very much it's more like kind of dramatic and nuanced than you would expect from like a Saturday morning kids show, right? Um, so yeah, it looks great. Also, like after watching the first couple of episodes, I was like, I think, I think this is actually a 3D show that that, that they made look 2D. I think it's all actually 3D animation. Really? Because the more that I look at it, yeah, the, the, the more I watch it, I'm like, I think these are like, I think these are 3D models that are they're just like shaded and presented and made in such a way that makes them look like the original 2d models but i think it's actually all 3d 
which is cool. Nice. Did, did they um, kind of take a, a page out of the Spider Verse book a little bit, and like, kind of, yeah. I, I, I mean, it's, it's more just like, I don't know. Maybe that was just a, it was just like an easier way to, easier or faster way to kind oh, of sure. keep a high quality animation. Like with with you know current technology, it's probably this is just a better way of doing it. But yeah, yeah. It's just like you know the way that you see some of the the characters like when they rotate, it's like they stay exactly on model all the time. Like they're, they're very like you can tell that you know, it looks like a like a solid object rather than if it was two D. Sometimes there's a little more like distortion to it or like okay you know, things don't exactly line up three dimensionally. You know. Yeah. Um, anyway, but it, but I'll, also I'll, like I'll, I'll, I think, watch that. I'll watch for that because I mm -hmm. yeah have not been paying attention to that. Yeah, um, but and I also think that something that sort of confirms that theory for me is that in the end credits they have a yeah. like they have like basically like a rotation of all the characters of like yep. th that are like they're th they're clearly three D models. Yeah. It's just like them rotating. It's on their uh, and their it's like, their so, screen. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. So that was cool. Um, yeah, definitely super cool show. I want to get back into it. I also need to watch Fallout and 800 other things. But yeah. yeah. Um, Man, I love Wednesdays right now because I get X-Men 87 and I also get Bad Batch. Bad Batch. Bad Batch! Bad oh my batch. gosh. Can we talk about the Bad Batch? We've only got three episodes left. Don't uh... say that. Don't say that. <laughs> it's too good. I don't want three episodes to of all of Bad Batch ever. Yeah. Uh, I... Yeah. Very exciting. Very cool. Um, we're back on currently in, in, in the season. We're back on Tantus uh, because Omega got herself like she she like gave herself up. She surrendered so that the Empire would stop the uh, destroying the island planet. What's it called? Pabu? I think it's Is that Pabu. what it was? Yeah. So they stopped carpet yeah. bombing a small um, idyllic island. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So she gave herself up and now. Uh, in the meantime, the rest of the Bad Batch are trying to figure out where Tantus is, and they kidnapped a, a former Imperial officer from an Imperial prison camp. And anyway, yeah. I think he's the one from it's very Peter exciting Bad Batch season one or two, where like, uh, I think he had some interactions with Cody. On mm -hmm. like, I think he was he was the officer that he took the fall for, um the destruction of Topoka City. Mm. Right, because I think Palpatine was like, how dare you do this behind my back? You're the fall guy, you're going to prison now. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I'm pretty sure that's who it was. But yeah, I think you're right. Um, but yeah, so all very cool and exciting, and I'm very much looking forward to seeing how it ends up with these last three episodes. Oh, ah. yeah. However, we did learn... In the, within the last couple weeks since our last recording um, of a a new animated thing. So <gasps> What is the check? Tell me, yeah. tell me. So the Bad Batch may be ending, but we are getting, as was confirmed before, uh, Tales of Jedi Season 2, except now we got a trailer for the season and a title change. It is now called Tales of the Empire. Um, it is releasing on May 4th, all of it, and it is about uh, Barris Afi and uh night sister lady what's her morgan name elsbeth. <laughs> morgan elsbeth yes so a really cool like uh combination of characters yeah we uh, finally get to see barris like for the first time <laughs> since the clone wars like since, since clone, clone wars, wars. Five, right? yeah she's been like mia yeah. since yeah. then Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, that's exciting. We we get to see her. It looks like it's going to be about her story is going to be about uh, her being trained to be a uh, inquisitor, and and we get to see we saw in the trailer a couple of the other inquisitors that we've seen in other stuff. So like the the inquisitor guy from Ahsoka who like exploded into green smoke or whatever. Yeah, uh, he is. Yeah, he's one of them, and then uh, the the guy with like the kind of uh like plague doctor mask looking bird face sort of thing yeah uh, from, from, from tales of the, the, jedi, the Ahsoka episode of tales of jedi, right? yeah from, from the end of tales of jedi season one yeah um him and uh and also like the grand inquisitor is going to be in it and 
a younger Thrawn is going to be in it and <laughs> a Grievous is going to be in it. And it looks awesome. I'm very yeah. excited. And Vader. Vader's going to be in it, too. And Vader. Right. Yes. Yes. Oh, so cool. It looks awesome. It looks great. And I'm, I'm just glad we're continuing to get more high quality Star Wars animation, you know? Yes. Um, Because I'm I'm still wondering, like, you know, what are they going to do after the Bad Batch is over? Because I hope that they continue doing stuff that, you know, like, like longer ongoing series. Like, I love the, like, Tales of the Jedi and and all that. Yeah. Um, And I would love for them to continue doing that. But I also want to, I want a new, like, Clone Wars style, some sort of, you know, like ongoing animated series, like the Bad Batch or Clone Wars or something. Yeah. That would Um, be, I wonder if, like, so, I'm so scared about the last three episodes of the Bad Batch because <laughs> everyone involved, especially like the Kiners, are out here. Like, like the Kiners are the 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 fam- the, composers. The, the three family members who compose all the music for it. Um, there's yeah. the dad and the brother and the sister, um, mm-hmm. and they are like tweeting out like not spoilers, but kind of spoil it, but not like that, but just like like just like <laughs> hey, by the way, this episode's gonna be devastating. Like, I'm not going to tell you what's going to happen, but, oh, no. but it's going to be awful. Um, oh, no. And so, like, come on, Kevin, all, all of the like. All, all, all of the previews that they've been given that they've given of the rest of the season and the rest of the series is like, mm. prepare to have your heart ripped out. It's going to be like Clone Wars season seven, but worse. Like no, <laughs> don't say that. That's what they're saying. Oh no, <laughs> yeah. So I'm so scared, but I want it so bad. But I'm so scared. I don't know if I'm ready to be hurt again. Yeah, I, I'm curious to know, like, you know, what are the fates of these characters going to be post the Bad Batch? Like, yeah, you know. which members of the Bad Batch are going to survive? Hopefully, all of them, and plus Tech, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, text, yeah, text, 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 text alive. Back. Definitely, yeah. It's gonna be so devastating because we're gonna be so happy. It's gonna be tears uh, of joy because text back. That's right, right, <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? I'm, I'm devastatingly happy. Yeah, <laughs> we're so happy. It circles around to sad. That's how happy we are. Yeah, uh, I'm. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, I just, I, I, I'm. My hope is that I don't think they're gonna kill Omega. I think that would be horrific and awful and i don't think they would do that um and also i just want to know like what her journey is like going forward i want to i want to see more i want to see like older omega in like yeah like sequel trilogy era and wouldn't it be so cool if omega showed up in like in ahsoka season two or something that would be cool that'd be cool that would be cool or like a mandalorian season or something man i just oh i want i just want to i want all my my good my good boys and girls to end up safe and okay and happy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's, all. That's all I want. Uh, anyway. Oh, man. All right. So, yeah. So, uh, Bad Bash, uh, Tales of the Empire looks amazing. And then one other bit of Star Wars news we got is uh, the Mandalorian and Grogu, the Mandalorian movie, uh, got an official release date, which is May 22nd, 2026. So, it's going to be a bit. Oh, boy. But we're getting another episode of Mandalorian, or another season of Mandalorian between now and then, as well as I think a season of Ahsoka. True. Yeah, yeah. So we're getting two more seasons oh, of live action Star Wars, at least, before we get that. Plus, Ac- plus Acolyte, plus, I guess, good. Skeleton Crew. Um, <laughs> <laughs> plus Tales of the Empire. Hey, I said live action. Live well, action. Live. shut up. <laughs> Anyway, uh, but yeah, cool, 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 cool beans. Exciting times in the Star Wars world. Yes. Um, Sam, are we ready to move on to our main segment for today? I will be in a second. I could go blow my nose really bad. Go do it. I got to do it. I got to do it. Do it. This isn't going as planned. Nothing to see here. He's back. Okay. Yes, we are ready to do the main segment. Yes. This feels like. I think these ep- this arc is the most the West Wing of any arc yes. that we've had so far. I, I kept I kept feeling very like I kept hearing the West Wing music in my head when yes. I was watching this episode. Padme is in her policy yeah. wonk era. Yeah. This is just all. And it, it, it's also yeah all policy all the time, all politics, all legislation, yes. just rules, and it's also like some of the most like in your face, like 
at, at the military industrial complex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen up, military industrial complex. Yeah. Padme's got some stuff yeah. to say. Here's this low budget Star Wars cartoon for you. We're gonna get you. <laughs> it's not that low, but Clone but, Wars was even at the beginning was three. very expensive. That's true. That's true. Yeah, it was like a million dollars an episode or some something crazy oh, like gosh. that. It's yeah. Anyway, um, it was still political yeah, commentary. So from the Clone Wars. <laughs> yeah, that's where I get all my best my political commentary. Yep. is from this and Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends <laughs> and and Tsunami. Let's be forget. Mm, yes, Tom. Give me your good political commentary, Robot yep. Man. Um, all right. Uh, so, yeah, this week we're talking about The Clone Wars Season 3, Episodes 10 and 11, Heroes on Both Sides and Pursuit of Peace. Uh, Sam, where does this take place in the timeline? We are in 21 BBY. <gasps> cool. Okay. Uh, do you want to walk us through the the summary of this first episode, I Sam? I so much. The moral of this episode is fear is a great motivator. <clears throat> Conflict with no end in sight. Across the galaxy, the quagmire of war continues. While clone troopers suffer casualties at alarming rates, the Galactic Senate convenes an emergency session to debate the true cost of the war. Right. <clears throat> with the clone army being gradually decimated in battle and the Separatists gaining ground, Several members of the Senate plead for the financing of more troops and the deregulation of the banking system, topics which divide the Senate as the war funds are practically exhausted, which could effectively drag on the war even longer. Senator Amidala suggests negotiating with the separatists, and Senator Bail Organa proposes a temporary halting of any further pro-war considerations until the matter has been cleared. This does not sit well with the profiteering Senate representatives of the Trade Federation, Techno Union, and the Intergalactic Banking Clan. Who would have thought that this doesn't sit well with <laughs> with the three corporate lobbyists who are actually senators? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. yeah. These three representatives, the worst. Lot Dodd. Lot Dodd. Uh, Gumi Sam and <laughs> Nick's card proposed to have Coruscant attacked in order to accelerate the decision of in favor of pro-war funding. So they're just out here like these three senators are like, what if we just like bomb this planet we live on just to scare people <laughs> into like giving us more money? Mm -hmm. That's yeah, that's the crux of the episode. And indeed. Yeah. All right. Anyway, so what fun. Anakin pa pleads with uh, pa excuse me. Padme pleads with Anakin who has been witnessing the discussion along with his Padawan Ahsoka to persuade the Jedi Council to speak with Chancellor Palpatine about denying the continuation of war efforts, a proposition Anakin shrubs, shrugs off. Ahsoka, on the other hand, does not understand what negotiation with the Separatists would bring if all of them, as she presumes, are evil warmongers. Put off by his pro-war response, Padme decides to favor Ahsoka for help rather than Anakin. Hmm. Yeah, this one was very. It was funny to me because, yeah, uh, and it's like, yeah. Let me explain politics to you, Ahsoka. Basically, uh, the separatists think that the Republic is corrupt, but they're wrong. We have to prove it. We have to prove them. Yeah. That. <laughs> and, yeah. And Padme's like, you have a very. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Padme's like, uh, maybe a little simplistic, Annie. Um, yeah. Oops, which is great. Yeah. Um, also, I don't know if you noticed, but this is the this is the first episode where we got uh, Ahsoka's new design. I did new see. Outfit. I did notice. That. I wondered if I had missed it in previous episodes, but I did notice. Yeah, that no, she I, was I looked it up, and this outfit. is the first episode. Cool. Yeah, yeah, she's not wearing a tube top anymore. That's nice. Yes, I. They gave her I really like her, her updated look. Yeah. <laughs> it looks really nice. I like I like the way her her yeah. sleeves look, and she also just like they up. I think you're, they updated her character model a little bit to make her look like a bit taller and older. Yeah. Um, which is, yeah. Because we've known her for about I, a I year like the, at this her, point, her so it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> All right. Uh, in her office, Padme tells Ahsoka that she intends to visit Senator Mina Bonteri, her old friend and mentor, who has joined the Separatists. The plan is rendered difficult because Bonteri 
resides behind enemy lines on Raxus Secundus. But then Padme cunningly suggests using Ahsoka's Jedi status to smuggle her to smuggle herself into the enemy's territory to meet Bon Terry, set off in disguise, land on Raxus, and meet up with Bon Terry, who smuggles them through the droid controls. Padme and Bon Terry greet each other cordially, but with her instinctive distrust of the Separatists, Ahsoka is less than pleased, even when, when Bon Terry's son, Lux, tries to extend her a warm welcome. Oh, Lux Bon Terry. Lux Bon Terry. It's a fun name. What a dork. He's a dork. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't, yeah. I have thoughts about Lux Bon Terry. He's a weird character. Anyway, uh, <laughs> we'll get to it when we get to it. While talking with cool. Bon Terry, Ahsoka finds her attitudes being tempered as Bon Terry patiently states that some of the Separatists may have had good reason to leave the Republic and recounts that she has already lost her husband in war on Aragon R. Aragon R. Uh, one, Aragorn R. Yeah, Aragorn R. Yep, one year ago, <laughs> uh, taking a walk in the garden to get over her confusion, Ahsoka meets Lux, and the two discuss the blurred concepts of the good and the evil sides of the war, and how much they actually know or don't know about the respective opposition. Padme and Bonteri, as the friends they are, agree on a notion to move the Senate and the Separatist Parliament to initiate a mutual peace negotiation and thus attain a peaceful solution. The Separatist Council in general approves this proposition, though there are a few opposing votes, including the Corporate Alliance. You don't say. What a shock. I know. (laughs) However, while Dooku publicly favors the decision, he secretly instructs General Grievous to deposit a group of droids described as sanitary units on Coruscant to to conduct acts of sabotage. They move Transformers. They move to the Senate District power generator and set themselves up as living demolition charges, causing a massive power failure. Just as Padme has the Senate vote on the separatist proposal for peace, this covert attack dramatically changes the Senate's attitude, and the bill for deregulating the banks is passed. Ahsoka, despite being scolded by her master for her illegal and dangerous action, walks away from those events with a more tempered view of both sides of the war. End of the first episode. Yay! Yay! We did it. Yeah, this episode was very like, I mean, it had a very clear like, <laughs> like message and moral. It was like, yeah, it, it it's all. This episode is basically all about Ahsoka learning that like, yeah, there are heroes on both sides. Literally, yeah. it, it's, it's this idea that like, she has a very black and white view of, you know, good and evil and of morality and of the the who are the heroes and the villains in this war, yeah. which I think. Based on, you know, Anakin's, like, you know, he, the way he describes politics at the beginning of the episode makes sense that that's what Ahsoka would feel. Right. Uh, yeah, it is a very, it's kind of like a very, like, not super subtle, like, don't believe everything your government tells you kind of message. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah. yeah, one of the things that I wanted to talk about was Lux and Ahsoka mm-hmm. and their, their meeting, because <laughs> uh-huh. it kind of seemed... Like, it seemed like Lux was trying to flirt with Ahsoka, and Ahsoka was maybe trying to flirt with Lux, and it was just weird. It felt weird. Mm-hmm. But then, like, Lux is like, you've never met a Separatist. I'm the first Separatist you ever met. I can't be that bad. And here he is just, like, wearing this, like, very fancy-looking suit, standing on, like, an estate. Like, I don't know. It's just very, <laughs> like, rich boy. Like, I'm not that bad. Like... I don't know. Yeah. It was like no, I get what you mean. Yeah, like you, like you just like I don't know. I don't know. I got weird. I'm vibes. rich. I can't be that bad, yeah. right? I yeah. <laughs> I'm a billionaire. I can't be bad. Anyway, mm-hmm. that was my thoughts. On but that. yeah, I, I, but I, I yeah no, I I definitely I feel that. Um, yeah. At the same time, I, I think vibes. that like, like I, don't, we, I don't like this. I don't know why. No, yeah, but I don't. the vibes are yeah, yeah. Lux has. Uh, d- not a fan of Lux's vibes, Mm-mm. but that being said, I, I, cool. I like his mom is cool, and I like the fact that there's a um, I, th- I think it was just cool that uh, I mean, you know, obviously, it's, it's a pretty simplistic lesson in this episode, but I just like the fact that we uh, that Ahsoka gets exposed to the other side of what is usually a pretty faceless 
uh, enemy, you know, because because most of the people that she encounters from the Separatists are either battle droids or they're lightsaber wielding maniacs. Right. And right. <laughs> and, and the fact that she gets exposed to like, yeah, these are just like people like the Separatists are not like a monolith of, you know, yeah. war criminals. It's, you know, there are people who exist in these systems who, you know, may or may not want to be in this war or may right. or may not, you know, agree with, with what their leaders are perpetrating or saying. And yeah, like they're, they're, they're human beings or, you know, they're people. Some of them are aliens, but yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? No, yeah. Um, um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, I walked away from this episode and like, I even I like told Sarah this, I was like, man, they like crammed a lot of like, just like good, like, critical thinking instructions in like a kid's show for kids and so like i don't know i think i was just like it's just really good to like they're kids who grew up watching this and now they're adults and now they're like thinking interacting and like maybe somewhere like the lessons they learned from this episode like kind of like seep into who they are and stuff and like i don't know just because a lot mm -hmm. of star wars especially the prequel era is very pointed at like kind of a post 9-11 america um yeah it's yeah. about corrupt institutions yeah, yeah. Um, and i don't know i just i really like it it's good yeah no agreed yeah um I, i'm looking at the like the trivia and behind the scenes stuff for this episode um this is her first time using a shoto but i don't oh. know if, did she have two lightsabers before or was it just or is this her first time having? Is this her first time having two lightsabers, or is this, this her first time, first time having two lightsabers? With like, yeah, because I do remember seeing both on the. Yeah, I I guess that was part of her character redesign. Was now she has the two. Yeah, but she hasn't used anyway. them yet. She doesn't use them at all in these two episodes. True. We we see them on her hip, <laughs> basically, yeah. and that's it. Um, fun fact: uh, the title "Heroes on Both Sides" is a reference to the opening crawl of Revenge of the Sith, which stated, "There are heroes on both sides. Evil is everywhere." That's neat. That's a little, little thing. Yeah. Apparently, so yeah, let me read this little, little paragraph uh, from the continuity section of this episode on Wikipedia. Um, this episode marks the debut of revamped appearances for several characters. Anakin and Obi-Wan wear less clone armor. Anakin has longer hair, and Obi-Wan's hair color has been altered to more closely match his live-action appearances. Ahsoka and Senator Chuchi debut new outfits and have aged up character models, giving them a more teenage appearance. In Ahsoka's case, this includes longer head tails and more developed montrals. Additionally, this episode marks the debut of Ahsoka's Shoto lightsaber. So there you go. And also, she That's doesn't neat. have a tube top anymore. True. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. It felt weird. All right. <laughs> We're ready to move on to the next episode, Pursuit of Peace. Very. You reading this one? All right. So, yeah, I got it. The moral of this episode is truth can strike down the specter of fear. <clears throat> That's what it sounds like, right? Peace shattered. Once promising negotiations between the Republic and Separatists are now in shambles following a droid suicide bombing on the capital city of Coruscant. As fear and anger... As fear and anger prevail, the Senate overwhelmingly passes a bill to deregulate the banks, opening a gateway to additional troops and an increase in fighting. Alright. The droid suicide attack, which, that's funny to me that they call yeah. it a suicide attack. It like, is they're funny. robots. They are robots. But whatever. Anyway. Droids is people too, Transformers. Jack. Droids is people too. More than meets the eye. Droids is people too. The droid suicide attack has dramatically swung the Senate towards continuing the war and funding the creation of more clone troopers. Padme Amidala desperately tries to convince her fellow senators that not all separatists are warmongers, but this turns the general mood against her. In addition, Count Dooku suddenly contacts the Senate and declares that the Republic forces have carried out a devastating attack on Confederate territory, killing Mina Bonteri in the process, though the Republic contends that she was murdered by Dooku's agents for her peace efforts, and officially withdraws the Confederate Senate's peace proposal, further agitating the diplomats. So yeah, Mina Bonteri gets one episode to be a cool person, and then they kill her off, so... Yeah. <laughs> Poor Mina. Poor Mina, that sucks. Yeah. She was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. She does. Yeah. Unfortunately, it, 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 the first not time we ever cool met, uh, to not die. 
Yeah. It was our first time meeting a separatist that was like, you know, a, a, a fully fleshed out decent character instead of a cartoonish villain, you know? Right. And she seemed like a, you know, she seemed cool and like, you know, she's friends with Padme, so she can't be bad, right? Um, anyway. Uh, in a private conversation afterward, Padme, Anaconda Far, and Bail Organa decide to approach the banking clan for a loan for more logistic supplies in order to gain some means of fighting the deregulation bill. From the banking clan representative, Padme and Farr learn to their outrage not only that the clan is charging their public an extraordinarily high interest rate of 25%, which by itself would drain public funds for many of the so many of their social programs, but also that they are financing more than 3 million separatist battle droids as well. Also, Senator Organa tells Padme that several of the more upright senators were threatened into voting in favor of the bill, which frightens other senators so much that they decide not to fight the bill. The alternative being ending up like Bonteri. Yeah. I, the, <laughs> the the banking clan guy, I just got to mention, he looks like a Muppet to me. He, he does. looks very Muppety. Long, tall face with big nose. Yeah. You know, what he, you know what he reminds me of? He reminds me of the news reporter Muppet with a, with a tall, long face. The Muppet <laughs> News Flash okay. guy. Yeah. Muppet, Muppet News Flash. Flash. Yes. He does look like yes. that. Yes. <laughs> That's what he looks like yeah. to me. He, also, he looks like that. Anyway. Or like if they made a Muppet of like some of the Egyptians from Prince of Egypt because they all were like very long heads. Right. Because he yeah. also wears like yeah, a yeah, pharaoh kind of thing. Like the pharaoh like mm -hmm. headdress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, he's silly. He's silly. <laughs> I like his silly face. He's just a very silly character. Um, yes. The same night, Far is accosted and brutally beaten by bounty hunters Robo Nino and Chata Hiyoki but doesn't back down from his decision to fight the bill, making Count Dooku urge the two deadbeats to employ some more drastic measures. The next night, Padme asks Organ to speak to the assembled Senate and present the facts. Padme tries to personally approach those still undecided. After she and Far play, pay a rather futile visit to Senator Christo, Padme decides to take a walk to relax her mind. Robonino and Hyoki assault her, but two police droids buy her just enough time to prevent the worst. Bereft of her driver, she promptly mounts a nearby speeder bike and manages to shake off her attackers in a vicious chase, but that results in the police taking an undue interest in her, and Padme is held up while the thugs escape. Back in her quarters, Padme is taken care of by the handmaiden Tekla Minau, who expresses her admiration to the senator. Upon learning that Tekla's family is severely affected by the war, the two young women get into a talk. The next morning, Robo Nino and Hiyoki attack Senator Organa as well. Organa manages to summon the guards summon his guards and the police, and the two thugs are arrested. He is severely injured in the struggle and therefore asks Padme to deliver his speech. After some encouragement by Tekla and Far, Padme steps before the Senate and delivers an impromptu and passionate speech, recounting the problems of the simple people, like Tekla's family, due to the financial strain the war has already brought upon the Republic, arguing that the bill's passage would harm the citizens of the Republic they have sworn to protect. The speech wins reluctant favor and respect from the entire Senate. Later in his quarters, Chancellor Palpatine angrily muses to Masa Meta about the success one passionate voice can have over his own power, showing his true face for the first time. But he decides to wait until fate and the Senate will work in his own favor once again. End of the arc. Mm. Yay. That last scene with Palpatine was like kind of creepy. It was very like, yeah. It we, was very like we got like, first like you could tell that like he, he was smiling, but you could tell that he was mad. It was that kind of creepy. Yeah. Like, we got our first, like, glimpse of Emperor Palpatine in that right there, I think. Because mm -hmm. in all of this, he's just kind of been, like, a kind of a slimy but very, like, adept politician. And now he's, like, I don't know. Like, I feel like we got it, the first glimpse of, like, the Sith Lord ruling the galaxy. Glimpse mm -hmm. through. Yeah, you can tell he's, he, he's pissed off. You can tell. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Uh. I can't, I can't help but, like, especially in this episode, I couldn't help but thinking about how much, again, this feels like a West Wing episode yeah. to me. Like, uh, I mean, for one thing, uh, Bail Organa is in it, who is, you know, he's President Santos from the West Wing, so yes. he's in it. Um, but, that aside, <laughs> the, like, I don't know, just the, the, the way that it's it's about, you know, people trying their best, politicians trying their best to, like, you know, serve the people within complex systems and, and trying to, like, uh, you know, assuage various uh, 
disparate interests and disagreements and, and you know um especially the the whole like you know Padme talking to Tekla about her experience and then the the impassioned speech at the end and trying to kind of you know bring everybody back to like this is why we're governing governing this is the point is to to help right. the people that we are meant to serve and yeah just good vibes you know it was I liked that that was cool also the the bike the speeder bike chase through Coruscant was cool it was cool it's always fun to get to see Padme kick ass um and yeah it was a fun fun time good episode great 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 uh Sam do you have a favorite part of this arc oh man I don't know I think it's not like a one part of the arc but I think just kind of like seeing Ahsoka mature into the Ahsoka we see towards the end of the Clone Wars. Like, it's just kind of like our first mm-hmm. little glimpse of, like, Ahsoka's growing up. She's not the annoying kid anymore. She's not even, like, the... just the Padawan anymore. Like, we got to see her kind of, like, butt heads with Anakin and win on something. And, like, mm-hmm. um, really her take the lead on some stuff. Um, I don't know. I just it, It's cool to see Ahsoka grow up. Yeah. This episode. Agreed. Yeah. This felt like a, a pretty pivotal. <clears throat> yeah. The first episode felt like a pivotal moment for Ahsoka yeah. in some ways. Like, I think in, you know, in the last season or so, we've definitely seen Ahsoka, like, she's not the annoying kid or like the kind of insolent child that she maybe used to be sometimes. Yeah. And she's more like capable and able to take care of herself and make wise decisions. Um, and now we're seeing her mature in a different way where she's starting to understand like the kind of the complexities of conflict and of war and relationships. And like, she's, you know, she, she matured as like, as a warrior and as a soldier. And now she's maturing as a person in a way that she hadn't before. She, she has this opportunity to, you know, learn more about like, again, there are heroes on both sides. It's, It's an idea of, you know, it's not so black and white and treating things as black and white will lead to undue suffering. Right. You know. Yeah. Which is cool. Um, yeah, so definitely, yeah, Ahsoka's growth that we get to see in this episode is, is cool. Um, and also, I just like the, I like, let's see, I like the, the chase sequence, the Coruscant with uh, Padman on the bike, and I liked her speech at the end. It was a good that speech. Was cool. uh, yeah. I I was like a good like <laughs> like people somebody using their words to turn the tides at the at the very end. It's yeah. always nice. I, I love good impassioned speech. Yep. Yeah. Um All right, um MVP. I feel like there's a pretty clear choice for this. What do you think? Padme. Yeah, it's got to be Padme. Yeah. Pa- yeah, Padme was the MVP of this absolutely. This is this is her arc. Yes. More than anything. Um yeah, definitely Padme. Stats, uh, main character kills. I don't think anybody... Yeah, no, there were no no kills. Uh, no lost limbs and no Wilhelm screams that I heard. Sad. Um, more Star Wars is better Star Wars. How did this episode make the movies and the rest of Star Wars better? I think we talked about uh, Ahsoka, definitely her character yeah. development and her learning of, like... I think that's the, that's the main thing. And also just kind of the... Getting some, some further insight into the complexities of war and of, of this war in particular yeah. and how uh you know you've got people who are like you've got you, we, we got a clearest like i think the the clearest example of war profiteering in this oh, episode yeah. than we had in any others you know yeah um and yeah definitely so i think that that would be could be it yeah yeah fun arc good arc this is good good one yes uh sam you had something that you had an idea for us to I did. To a do. little fun <laughs> end of episode discussion. We haven't done one of these in a while. Uh, we, we've Bonus. asked a similar question before. Uh, that question being, if you could change anything about Star Wars, what would it be? And a lot of our, um, our thoughts and opinions took rightful aim at the sequels, um, as well as some other <laughs> random things. But it was mostly just like at like, maybe have one person write the movie trilogy instead of like, a committee of people who are bad at writing. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but this this question, I think I, I would really, really like to hear your thoughts on this. 
if you could change mm-hmm. one thing about your favorite Star Wars movie or show, what would you change? Yeah. So I think probably, honestly, my favorite Star Wars thing, if I had to choose, is Rebels. Okay. I love Rebels. I, I think it's 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 very near and dear to my heart, and I love those characters. And it's, I think it's got some of the best stories and storytelling in Star Wars. Um, I... It's weird. I think that, like, <laughs> the thing that I would want to change the most about Rebels is I wish it had been done. Like, I, I like the way that Rebels looks, definitely. But mm. I, I want to see a version of Rebels that was made in the with the budget and the art style of Clone Wars. Of, yes. like, you know, like Season 7 Clone Wars. Absolutely. Just so, you know, something more cinematic and cool looking. And, and like, I think they, they did absolutely a, a great job with the, the budget they were given. Yeah. And... I think it looks, you know, it looks more like a kid's show. Uh, and I think that's probably partially in, in, in intentional, but also uh, a result of a lower budget. But yeah. um, did the storytelling and the art direction are still so really, bad. really strong. Yoda looked so bad. <laughs> he did look a little goofy. Yeah. yeah just... He looked very cartoony. Yeah. And not in a good way. <laughs> yeah. He looked, he looked like a plushie of Yoda rather than, than Yoda himself. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that would that, that's yeah. Honestly, I like I love the the characters and the writing and the the storytelling and the content of Rebels, but I think to see it in that kind of higher fidelity, more cinematic sure. style would have been really cool. That would be cool. I agree. What about you, Sam? Um, so my favorite Star Wars thing is Revenge of the Sith, and Excellent. if I and especially like in light of this arc that we just watched, I think I would. I don't know. The writing for Padme was terrible in Revenge of the Sith. Like it was rough. It was like because yeah. it was just very like, oh Annie, you're breaking my heart, and then she dies of sadness. Like I I mm-hmm. I don't I don't want that. Um, I <laughs> I would want yeah. to see Padme Amidala, the like the senator we see in this episode. I want to see mm-hmm. her like voicing her opinion to the first galactic empire or, or opposition to like the formation, like mm-hmm. the rise of the empire and also maybe standing up to Anakin like she does in this episode. And like, um, mm-hmm. and she doesn't really stand up to him, but she like, she pushes back and she doesn't push back really yeah. at all. In Revenge of the Sith. She kind of does in attack the clones, but like, mm-hmm. but like Anakin, like, Says like I think fascism is good. She's like, huh, wait, really? Was kind of like her only like response. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I agree. I, I hadn't thought about about that really, but like now that you've described it, I'm like, yeah, that that would have been like. I think we on we get more develop. I mean, like the Clone Wars in general, we get more development of a lot of the prequel era characters because of just the amount of time we're given. Yeah. But like. Yeah, I think I, I agree. I would like to see more, uh, see Padme fleshed out more in, in Revenge of the Sith and give her some more autonomy rather than being like, for the most part in Revenge of the Sith, she's just kind of is there yeah. to be like, you know, like, oh no, she's going to die. She, she, she's like the reason for Anakin to get stressed out <laughs> yeah. like rather than, you know, a, a, a character on her own with like agency and things to do and to contribute. Right. Um, which we see a lot more of in the Clone Wars, luckily. But yes, yeah, no, that makes sense. But yeah, that was my thought. And a lot of it was just kind of inspired by this arc. And I think I saw someone post on Twitter a similar question, and they also pointed out like uh, Padme in Clone Wars is better than Padme in the movies. And I wish we saw that. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh yeah, yeah. And this is a perfect example. Yeah, I feel bad for Natalie Portman. She she deserved better. She definitely. very much did, and she could have done yeah. a lot better with better writing, but. She got the writing she got. Yeah. And she knocked it out of the park with what she yeah. got. Like, Yeah, she she did. Yeah, she did the absolute best that she could with the script that she was given and the yes. direction she was given. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's any other, like, I mean, you know, we, we said our, you know, our favorite things, but like, thinking about, were there any others for me that like, any things that I, you know, Star Wars things that I love that I would want changed somehow? Um... I think, like, I know it's good that we got the Clone Wars series, but I wish that, like, mm-hmm. maybe Attack of the Clones would have been 
more Clone Warsy. Like have more like instead of just like the Battle of Genosis and then like we just watch them all march off to war and then we come in at like three years later the end. at the end of the war. Yeah. You know, like if maybe I don't know. It's good that we have the Clone Wars show to bridge that gap. But I wish that the Clone Wars show didn't have to do as much as it did to like bridge the gap. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, I think there there's definitely a much larger conversation that we could have about the prequels and how they're structured and, and how like I feel like there, there I know there are some like I've read a lot online of people talking about like how the prequels how they think the prequels should have been different or ways in which the prequels could have been could have been improved. Yeah. And I think one thing that I've seen before that I, I kind of think I would agree with is the idea that uh the Phantom Menace should not have been a full movie. That basically they should have just had like the like it should there should have been like a prologue basically at the beginning of Attack of the Clones. And Attack of the Clones should have been the first movie, and it would oh. have been just like here's you know they briefly introduce like a young Anakin, and then you see the the sequence where uh, Qui Gon dies, and then they move on to just kind of because that's really all you need from the Phantom Menace. It's right, just this, you just kind of get like this establishing like. The prologue mm-hmm. to Attack the Clones, and Attack the Clones being Episode One, Clone Wars yes. being Episode Two, and then Episode Two would be actually the Clone Wars. Yes, that yeah, I like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. okay. I think that that would have been a maybe a better like as much as I love the Phantom Menace and all it has going for it. I think structurally, in terms of like the trilogy, yeah, there's a lot that just gets skipped over, right? Because standing on its own, you know, the Phantom Menace is a perfect movie. So we don't need. Why are you laughing? Honestly, I, it's great. I it's love such it. a good movie. I don't know why you're laughing. I, I like kind of meant that sincerely. It was, it's a great movie. No, yeah, I agree. I just mm. it, it's funny to me to mm. hear you say that when the Phantom has, has such for such a long time had such a poor reputation. I know, and like there are things about it that I think are are could be better, definitely. But like, no, yeah, overall, I think the Phantom is a great movie. It's a fantastic I think it's, movie. Yeah, yeah, it's great. I love. It. Um, yeah. yeah. Thanks for noting right. that. Uh, I that. Yeah, no, that was fun. I, we should have more little yes. de- debates, discussions, things like that. It's fun. Um, we, we don't have any voicemails this week, do we? I don't think so. I think there's one in the bank, but I think we already did that one. Okay. Um, all right. Well, uh, everybody, if you would like to join in our discussion at some point, uh, leave a voicemail at 512-850-6653 and we might feature your comments, questions, or corrections on the podcast. Uh, join us next time, everybody, when we will be talking about... Uh, Clone Wars Season uh, 3, Episode 15, I think? Senate Murders. Season No, Season 2, Episode 15. 2, 15? Which oh, is weird. that is weird. We're going back to Season 2 for some reason, but yeah. Uh, T2 episode 15 is Senate Murders is what we're going to be talking about. Okay. Uh, so, and then after that, we get the Night Sisters arc. Ooh. Heck yeah. And then after that, we get the Mortis arc. Oh my gosh. We are two episodes away. Oh from my Mortis God. Arc. We're, we're, we're getting, we're getting into some good stuff, man. So excited. Oh yeah. Good times. Good times. Yes. Um, all right. Thanks everybody for listening again. Uh, Stay safe. Don't do any spice unless you're, you know, you feel like it. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a cop. Um, you gotta tell me if you're a cop. <laughs> you gotta, it's entrapment if you don't tell me. Yeah. You gotta tell me. <laughs> um, uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, we'll see you next time, and may the force be with you all. Bye bye. See you later. Roger, roger.